Welcome back guys. Today I wanted to talk about data analytics within banking. So when it comes to banking, most of you will know retail banking. It's the most common form of banking. So when you think about savings accounts, having a credit card or having a debit card, all that is grouped under retail banking. And I want to make a point of this because there are different types of banking and different types of banking have different flavors of analytics. Let's go on to the second big type of banking and that is commercial. So when you think of businesses, any small businesses, whether it's a bakery shop, whether it's a gym, chain, whether it's a restaurant or a hotel, they all need business bank accounts and that falls under commercial banking. So commercial banking is a huge area within the world of finance. One of the most third most common forms of banking, which many of you will know by now, is investment banking. So investment banking is investing in equities like stocks and shares. It's about literally buying debt. It's about merger and acquisitions. It's about buying up other firms. There's a whole raft of different forms of investment banking. So they're the three main buckets, retail banking, commercial banking, and investment banking. I've had the pleasure and the privilege of working in two of those, which is commercial banking and investment banking. But there is one more flavor of banking, which is in fact wealth management. We're not going to cover it today but I want you guys to know that there are other smaller areas of banking as well. Now, when it comes to data analytics and the type of analytics that is being done, depending on the type of banking operation being performed, there are some nuances and there are some differences that you need to know about. But on the whole, the question matter, because remember with analytics, the business comes first and it's always about answering a business question. It's always the same. So I'll give you an example. The most common type of analytics that you will ever do is what's called descriptive analytics. And that essentially is answering the question, what happened? What happened in my business? What happened here? What happened there? So I'll give you a few examples within those those three areas of banking that I discussed earlier. So if we talk about retail banking, for instance, we're talking about transactions. What transactions took place today? What transactions took place last month? What kind of transactions were they? Were people withdrawing cash? Were people making payments on their card? It's all about the what, the what happened. And that is known as descriptive analytics. And that on the whole is a large chunk of the type of analytics you'll do in a bank. So you'll create dashboards, you'll create reports, you'll send data to stakeholders, you'll send data to managers. They'll be asking you, what were my sales last week? What was the growth in customer acquisition? They'll be asking you these questions and you need to answer them. And that is a large part of data analytics within a bank. In fact, I would say that's almost 50% of all data analytics that you do in a bank. And we'll come on to the remaining 50% very shortly. The second type of data analytics is centered around what I call diagnostic analytics. And the real question here is why did it happen? And that is a question you need to solve for. So your managers or people within the bank of a retail bank, say for instance, may ask the question, why did the customer go overdrawn? Why did the customer fail to make a payment? Why did the customer not consider this product or that product? These are all diagnostic questions which are very relevant in a bank. And that forms another 30% of the type of analytics you'll now be doing in a bank. So combined with our previous step, the descriptive analytics, and now the diagnostic analytics, you've got your 80% of all analytics are centered around the what and the why. So that now leaves us with the remaining 20%. Now, believe it or not, what I'm about to cover now is rarely done in a large bank or even a small bank for that matter. And the reason why is because a lot of banks struggle with the what, and the struggle with the why. They struggle getting all their data together in one place. They struggle answering and looking at patterns. They struggle cleaning data. That's one of the biggest challenges with banks. Or they also struggle with processing of data as well. The data in a bank can be spread across multiple systems. You might have up to four, five, six, sometimes 10 systems, and you have to pull all that data together. And often by the time you've pulled the data together, it's already out of date. So these are the challenges big banks face. So the third type of analytics, which we're now seeing slowly emerge, is what will happen. So that's another question that I get asked, but not often. And the what will happen is essentially predictive analytics. And this is part of a framework you might have gathered. I'm going through these stages because it's part of a framework that was recently shared and published by Gartner. But the third type of analytics is called predictive analytics. And that is a question where your manager or senior manager will ask what would happen if, and this is where you have a long blank 
blank space and it's entirely up to you how you fill that space. So the types of questions that may be asked here and have been asked of me personally are what would happen if I increase my interest rate? What would happen if I remove this product and I only sold this product? Would customers switch? If I increase my prices, will customers leave? Would they go to a competitor or would they stay because they are loyal to the bank? What would happen if I offered customers a discount? Would they buy more or would they not care? If I gave you a discount on your credit card, would you spend more? Probably not. But for some customers, it could mean a lot, especially businesses. Businesses are often very meticulous and they are very detailed and manage their cash flow very carefully. So it's really important for businesses at least to get their finance right. So that's the predictive analytics and that is the what would happen. This is the scenario building, the scenario making. And this is the type of analytics that more banks are slowly doing, but not enough yet. And that leaves me on the last type of analytics, which is the most advanced and sophisticated of the four different types of analytics that we've covered today. And that is what is known as prescriptive analytics. Prescriptive analytics, think of a scenario where you had to go to the doctor, the doctor gives you some medicine, they give you what's called a prescription. With that prescription, you can then go and buy some medicine and treat yourself. You may have an illness, you may need a cure, the medicine is your cure. And it's very much the same for big banks. Big banks often ask themselves the question, what would happen if, but now they wanna model a scenario. Now they wanna know how can I do this? Or how can I do that? Now it's moved beyond the what if planning. It's now a real question and a real drive to answer that question. So the question might be, for instance, how can I acquire more business customers to my commercial bank? Or how can I attract more retail customers to my credit card? Or how can I sell an overdraft facility to my customers? So these questions are all around how can we make something happen that has not yet happened, but you want to make it happen. You want to achieve a goal, but you want to plan how you're gonna get there before you've even got there. So this is very advanced thinking, especially for banks, because once again, remember, banks are struggling with the first and second form of analytics, so not yet at an advanced stage. But as you can imagine, with artificial intelligence and machine learning, they wanna unlock some of these opportunities. Banking isn't complex. A lot of people think it is. There are many different types of banking operations and types of banks. You obviously have many different types of banks all over the world. But the analytics is fundamentally the same wherever you go. Nothing really changes significantly from one bank to the other. But more importantly, I want to make sure, guys, that you understand the types of analytics that are being done in a bank. So if you're interested in applying for a bank, you've got to have a good idea of what may come your way if you want to focus on data analytics or data engineering or data science for that matter. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been interesting. Do drop me a comment or a question below if you have something very specific. But thank you for watching, guys. I hope to see you on more future content. If you haven't already, do consider subscribing to the channel and I'd love to see you on the next one. Take care for now. Bye.